Hey gang, it's your buddy Platt, and today I'm going to show you how to back sweeten hard apple cider. So let's go. Well, at the time of this recording, the whole world, for the most part, is in some form of lockdown in some way or another, so we're all kind of stuck at home, but we're still wanting something to drink, an adult beverage. So people have started uh, looking to make their own at home. And one of the easiest uh, adult beverages to make at home is hard apple cider. Basically, we just take uh, either apple cider, which is unfiltered apple juice, or just regular filtered apple juice, and you just take that and ferment it. Um, it's, it's one of the easier th easiest things to make. I will sh leave a link up here to my original apple cider video. Uh, we'll literally ferment in the jug. You don't even need a fermenter. Uh, however, one of the things I get, feedback I get from cider when people make cider or try traditional ciders. Uh, nowadays, the major breweries have all kinds of crazy flavored ciders, this, that, and the other. But traditional apple cider, a lot of people don't like because it's dry. A lot of people are expecting just to drink apple juice with alcohol. Uh, unfortunately, part of the process is the yeast that we use eats up the sugar inside. They need the sugar to, uh, to survive. So when we drink it after fermentation, the sugar is gone. And it's a little dry and people just don't like the taste. So one of the ways we improve the taste is to back sweeten. And that's what I want to talk about today in the video. Uh, Back sweetening is just a way to add that sugar back in that was lost through fermentation. Now there's a few different ways of doing that. Uh, some people would just take their fermented apple cider and just with their serving like, all right, we'll just pass out sugar or whatever and you add to taste. Instead of sweetening the whole batch, they just sweeten per drink, either with regular table sugar, honey, uh, agave nectar, what have you. Uh, in a way, it kind of becomes almost like a cocktail at that point, but that is a way to sweeten up your drink. Uh, the other methods are done at the batch level. One of the ways um, you could do it is to stop fermentation early. Don't let the yeast eat up all that sugar that they want. Um, the downside of that is you don't get as high as AB ABV. You don't get as much alcohol because we didn't let the yeast do their job completely. Also too, if you ever plan on bottling that, you don't, you're not sure if the yeast will reactivate building up CO2, which at first would carbonate, which is not always a bad thing, but too much of that can lead to what are called bottle bombs, and you have bottles exploding, your top blow off. Trust me, you don't want that. Uh, another method to sweeten our cider is to add more sugar, we allow this to ferment, but even when fermentation we think is done, even when the, the hydrometer doesn't show you know, progression, there's still most likely yeast in there. Um, yeast will work until they can't for the most part, but there's billions and billions of yeast cells going on at one time. Some die off earlier than others, some are just real hardy, so you, you kind of never know when that those final yeast cells stop. Well, this myth is we just keep adding sugar, and if there's yeast in there to eat it, we just keep letting them eat it, and it provides more alcohol. And you just keep doing yeast or uh, sugar additions after fermentation. You don't want to add all the sugar up front because you might not even start fermentation. It might be just too much for the yeast to handle. But after fermentation, going back and adding sugar, not bottling it, because again, we don't know if we're going to reactivate it and build up a lot of CO2 pressure, but just continuously adding sugar until they just all those yeast cells die and luckily we would have additional sugar in there to, to bring about a certain amount of sweetness. Um, that could take a while depending on your yeast strain or whatever, but that is an option. Uh, however, you're probably going to end up just having a sugar sweetness to it, which is going to have a little different flavor. And then the uh, fourth way, and the way we're going to do it, in a way a lot, the way I originally learned to back sweeten is we will ferment this one gallon, we will let it ferment completely, and then we'll crash the fermentation the best we can, and then we would go back and add apple juice to it. Um, 
that's kind of what people are wanting anyway is kind of alcoholic apple juice in the first place so we'd go back and add apple juice to sweeten the flavor um, again hopefully after uh, fermentations over and we'll talk about how to avoid restarting fermentation from the point of view again not wanting to get bottle bombs or over carbonated uh, one other alternate out there not something I wouldn't do but you know just want to let you know it's out there is adding non-fermentable sweetener something like a stevia or whatever to the finished product it won't kick off fermentation again you can get the sweetness but some people aren't really in the idea of artificial or alternative sweeteners um, so like I said our plan here is we're going to ferment this one gallon of uh, apple cider uh, I'm not going to add any additional sugars uh, to it we're just going to ferment it we're going to use a champagne yeast the champagne yeast generally produces the clean dry traditional apple ciders and uh, we're going to do that we're going to let this go for a couple of weeks then we're going to go ahead rack it off separate it off from the yeast we're going to crash what's called cold crashing or put this in the fridge and that temperature will halt the yeast activity drop it to the bottom then we're going to add something called uh, potassium sorbate that, that is actually a preservative in some of these juice drinks that again will halt uh, any yeast activity or the possibility of fermentation and then we will go back then and then add our apple juice to taste creating a nice sweet um, hard apple cider so let me uh, get everything prepared I'm going to do a hydrometer reading real quick and then we'll come back to uh, add our yeast all right so uh, real quick I had a quick change of plans I went ahead and threw it in my one gallon uh, glass carboy fermenter uh, this plug I had did not fit the container the juice came in so I just decided to go ahead and put it in the glass fermenter uh, did a gravity reading we came out at 1.052 which means if we hit 1.00 uh, on our final gravity we'll get to around 6.8 plus on the ABV um, the yeast we're using is a champagne yeast you can use whatever kind of yeast you have available, including bread yeast, rapid rise bread yeast, regular bread yeast, what have you. It still works. Now, the champagne yeast, it is designed to obviously make uh, champagne. Champagne gets into the low double digits to teens as far as ABV, so it will thoroughly ferment this work quite easily and so we'll go through that sugar so we'll, we would end up with a dry cider that's why we're going to back sweeten it we're going to let this ferment for two weeks we'll come back in two weeks to do a gravity reading and see if we hit that mark or if there's still some room to go if we hit our target mark in the fermentation as far as the hydrometer says is done then we will go through the process of crashing it adding our potassium sorbate and then we'll uh, and then we'll be able to back sweeten um, our cider so we'll come back in two weeks and do another hydrometer reading all right so it's been two weeks we've uh, left her out room temperature to ferment uh, just did a gravity reading and we came out we hit our target 1.00 so with that we're around 6.8 percent ABV which is you know, what we're shooting for um, at this point most fermentation activity is done but there's still a little left and before we add any additional sweetness we need to stop that activity so what we're going to do next is I'm going to uh, rack this or transfer this into another container into our secondary fermentation and we're going to leave the yeast on the bottom most of this is dead yeast but some of it's live yeast so we're going to separate this liquid off that yeast now there's still yeast suspended in the liquid so what we want to do next is uh, we're going to cold crash it. we're going to drop the temperature I'm going to throw this in the refrigerator after I put it into a secondary container and that the, the temperature is going to slow down the cell activities and those yeast cells will then drop and then we'll use uh, after that occurs we'll use our potassium sorbate uh, potassium sorbate is a preservative it's used in a lot of juice drinks 
it prevents um, yeast activity from happening or uh, fermentation from occurring, but it doesn't stop it. It, it. We have to stop it first, and then this is used to prevent fermentation from starting back up again, which is what we want to prevent because we will then eventually add more juice to the back swing. So let me get this transferred. We're going to cold crash this overnight and then come back to add our potassium sorbate. All right, so we have uh, left our cider in the fridge overnight. Uh, hopefully the cold temperature has crashed the uh, fermentation activity. Uh, real quick, I took a little sample off to the side. Again, we're wanting to back sweeten this, so I just wanted to give a little taste, see where we're at now sweetness wise not bad it is uh, it is fairly dry though um, yeah fin uh, faint hint of the yeast not bad um, but I definitely think and especially most people's palates we could probably add a little more apple juice or additional sweetness. Uh, I, I think a lot of people would not find that approachable. So we'll continue the process. Uh, I'm going to go ahead now and add our potassium sorbate. Again, it's not to stop yeast activity. It's to stop it from renewing or beginning again. So uh, again, that's why we left it overnight was to stop uh, the yeast activity and now We'll add the uh, preservative in there. Uh, you don't need to stir or mix this up anyway. Um, it is three quarters of a teaspoon for every uh, gallon. So. All right, we're again no need to stir. We're just going to let that sit in there and uh, take hold. We'll come back here in about a day and uh, again hopefully at that point again any and all yeast, yeast activity stock will come back to bottle and when we bottle that's when we'll add in the additional juice. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Alright so it's the next day. I went ahead and transferred the cider into my, I'm going to use this Mr. Beer Fermenter is my bottling bucket. Um, when I checked this morning, all bubbling had stopped, so we'd stop the yeast activity, which is what we wanted to do. Now we're going to go ahead and add our juice. I have one gallon in here. I'm going to add 30 ounces of juice. So that's going to drop our ABV from around 6.8% down to around 5.5%. So it's still plenty of alcohol. It's still a uh, strong enough drink but we're going to add a little more uh, sweetness to it, the fresh juice. And then I've got my bottles ready and I'll go ahead and bottle it. Um, one thing we'll want to do when bottling, we're not going to add any additional sugar to it because again, we're not wanting to kick up uh, fermentation. Also too, we stopped it so there's no, we're, the yeast is not going to reactivate so we're not going to carbonate. So no need to throw sugar into the bottles. Uh, also too, we are, uh, we're going to, once we bottle, instead of leaving it out at room temperature for a couple weeks to help carbonate, we're just going to throw straight in the fridge. It's going to be ready to drink. Um, you don't want to leave the bottles out because God forbid there is some active yeast left. It'll re-kick off, especially if you leave it out at room temperature. Fermentation can uh, kick back off and thus we could potentially have bottle bombs so we want to avoid that. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and bottle this and we'll come back we'll try a little bit of our uh, final product of the apple cider and see where we need to adjust on the sweetness level. So let me come back. Alright so we've got our cider bottled and now it's time to try out, uh, see how we did with our back sweetening or the addition. We uh, added additional apple juice to it. So let's give her a try. 
Okay, yeah, that uh, that definitely helped it out. Um, actually, that's quite quite a drink. Um, so what we did was we took a gallon of our regular hard apple cider we made. We had 30 ounces of uh, apple juice. That's uh, one of the easier ways to back sweeten. Uh, if you want to, you can add honey. You could add sugar, brown sugar, molasses. You can sweeten however you want. Uh, if you wanted to mix juice, maybe like a cran apple thing where you would add cranberry juice instead of additional apple, you could do that. Just the, the point of this was uh, a lot of people, a lot of times when people make cider, it comes out a little drier than what they're expecting. They're expecting apple juice and uh, people get turned off by that. But uh, there's a way to fix it and it's called back sweetening. Um, again, the most important part is stopping that fermentation because uh, there's no, it's pointless to add additional sugar if we still have fermentation, if there's still active yeast in there, uh, you don't get, uh, you don't get that sweetness you're hoping for and you could potentially over carbonate and have one of these bottles blow on you, which is definitely the last thing you want. So that is how you back sweeten uh, hard apple cider. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comments section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.